salvation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. sing this with us, if you would, and stand if you so choose. Let us pray. Beloved God, you come from all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know that those things are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you all. The reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice, all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, lo infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scriptures, see, I am laying in Zion a, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are chosen, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles, so that though they malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Matthew, the 21st verse chapter. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, 
and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these parables, they realized that Jesus was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded Jesus as a prophet. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. I'm going to stand in the water over here. Well, welcome to our second week of our five-week series, and we are using this book, St. Peter's Principles by Peter Lillebeck, as a guide and a resource during our conversations. Peter, who was he? Peter was the name given to Simon, son of Jonah, a Galilean fisherman, and one of the first to, first called to follow Jesus. The Greek word for Peter is Petra, it means rock, as does the Aramaic equivalent Cephas. So you will hear Peter called by all of those names or a combination of those names as you read scripture, but there's one more that we heard Jesus call him. Peter was the first disciple to call Jesus Messiah, and Jesus responded by declaring, on this rock I will build my church. In the verses that follow, Jesus tells the disciples that he must be arrested and beaten and killed, and Peter wants none of it and rebukes Jesus for even saying it. And then Peter says, calling him by yet another name, Satan, get behind me. Peter had many failings in his life. And based off of the Peter principle, Peter Lilleback talks about all the principles of living out a Christian life using St. Peter as a guide. It was The Peter principle is a concept in management developed by Lawrence J. Peter, who observed that people tend to rise to a level of respective incompetence. Employees are promoted based on their success in previous jobs until they reach a level at which they are no longer competent, as skills in one job do not necessarily translate to another. Peter was a fisherman. What translates for him to be called as a disciple, to be called the rock in which the church should be built on? And Peter had many failures, incompetent in many ways. Yet, Jesus saw more in him than Peter saw in himself. We heard last week when Jesus told us, put our faith on, do not put your faith on perishable things, but on the imperishable. We are to set all our hope on the grace Jesus offers. And he has that grace to give us. For he, along with Peter, both quote Psalm 118. Jesus is the cornerstone, the stone that the builders rejected. The cornerstone is laid first. It is the head corner and governs every other corner and every angle in an entire building. And thus determines the place that every other stone is to be laid. Through his death, resurrection, and ascension... Jesus became that chief cornerstone of the spiritual temple, the church, and we are the living stones that are built upon him. The stone is a familiar image for God, found throughout the Old Testament that points to the Messiah. Jesus made it clear to the Jewish leaders, those who were raised with all of the knowledge and the ability to help the spiritual movement, yet it was the priests and the Pharisees that weren't able to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. And they rejected him. And he became to them a stone of stumbling. So our question for today is, what is your cornerstone? What are you building your life upon? Is it perishable? Or is it imperishable? Are you set on worldly things? I've made it when? 
or are you set on imperishable things? You are a child of God, accepted, forgiven, and loved. That can never be taken away. Jesus offers an opportunity for those who do step away, who do choose the perishable. And we hear it in our gospel reading. He says, therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces fruits of the kingdom. That is what we're called to do as a living stone built on that cornerstone. And what are the fruits of the kingdom? I immediately go to the fruit of the Spirit. Found in Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires, those perishable things. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Let us hold to the imperishable. And Jesus continues with this warning. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. Yet all is not lost. In the same prophetic message from Isaiah, God both claims the people to be his own and also condemns them for their actions. In chapter 43, verse 25, we hear God's promise. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Liam is baptized. He is forgiven for all that he has done for all that he will do, that is the promise that we are given. And he has received God's grace. What did he have to do to be baptized? Did he have to achieve something? No. He's born a child of God, and then through these waters, welcomed into the body of Christ and blessed with that Holy Spirit, with all of those gifts of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And we sometimes fall away from those things. But God continues to call us back, and Jesus says, come. To celebrate this day, Sue, one of uh, Liam's grandmothers, purchased donuts to celebrate. So following worship, come and enjoy some coffee, some water, some donuts. But it reminded me of a great example of how we understand this gift of grace. Tony Campolo, a Baptist minister, shared the following story that a person was speeding and a police officer pulled him over and the police officer gave him a ticket. The person had done something wrong. He had to pay a penalty. That is justice. Another person was speeding, and a police officer pulled him over, but only gave him a warning. He had done something wrong, but the police officer was lenient. That is mercy. Another person came screaming by, and the police officer stopped him and gave him a donut. He had done something wrong. He should have been penalized, but instead he was given a gift. That is grace. Walk wet and eat donuts. <laughs> Peter Lillibach, in his book, states, God's grace is greater than our incompetence. Whether it is speeding or things much worse, as we heard the list in Peter and Paul describes prior to sharing the gifts, um, the fruit of the Spirit. And we have this promise, one that uh, Jubilee helped us remember. Paul writes to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, There is therefore no, now no commendation, condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. So remember, you are a chosen people, 
a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Peter Lillebeck encourages us to claim these titles and then challenges us to go even a step further. When you're filling out any of those forms that say, what's your ethnicity, what's your gender, he said, write Christian. Because there are no Jew or Greek or male or female, for we are all one in Christ. We are all simply children of the Heavenly Father, given this gift of life for us to share and be blessed and to bless others with it. And that's the key. You are all of these things in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. As we have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light, we are to do likewise in grace. We announce it at every baptism. You heard Cody read it. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. There is darkness in this world, but there's also light. And we have that promise. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light continues to shine, but if you read the Greek, it ends. The darkness did not overcome it, for Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus lives in and through all of us. He is the cornerstone, and we are those living stones built up to create a spiritual home, a holy priesthood, and inviting others to join what would this world be like if we all lived in love and joy and peace and kindness and generosity and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control? Not controlling others, but just controlling ourselves. Knowing that justice is needed. But we are to offer mercy and go so far as to share God's grace with all people. Good works, living out the fruits of the kingdom and the spirit, for there is no condemnation in what we receive, and more importantly, there should be no condemnation in how we share the good news. Otherwise, it's not good news. As Peter Lillebeck in his book, St. Peter's Principle, ends each principle with some spiritual exercises, so I offer these to you for the week ahead. I encourage you to go back and read Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1 and chapter 2. What in that letter speaks to you today? And in Christ, is Christ your cornerstone? Is that what you have built your life upon? Is he that firm foundation in which you stand, receiving and offering the grace of Jesus? And then I encourage you to go back and read Galatians 5. All the things that we do wrong, and then Paul says, by contrast, live by the fruit of the Spirit. Does the Holy Spirit's grace guide and lead you if so, how? If not, why not? So do not allow your incompetence to define you. Don't allow someone else's incompetence to keep you from loving and caring and honoring them with that grace that God has given you. May Jesus be your corner cornerstone, for we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Live by the grace Jesus offers and share it with others in his name. Amen.
things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. With him there's no impossible, no nothing is too hard. I'm going to stand right up and claim all of his promises to you. Now with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Sing a love song to us, O God, with verses that rouse us to be the church in a world where faith is met with cynicism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sing a love song to us, O God, with verses that motivate us to rebuild where storms have torn down, droughts have sucked dry, and waters have flooded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sing a love song to us, O God, with verses that provoke us to create change where there is injustice, freedom where there is captivity, and harmony where there is violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sing a love song to us, O oh God, with verses that compel us to provide relief to those who suffer, comfort to those who mourn, protection to those who are vulnerable, and compassion to those who are scorned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And sing a love song to us, O oh God, with verses that lift us out of complacency and into our communities to share the priceless gift of knowing Christ Jesus as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need. In the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. And now join me in the prayer that the Lord has given us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world in peace, dedicated to God's service. Let us hold fast to that which is good. Render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the needy and the afflicted. And honor all people. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
takes me to a higher place where there's amazing grace takes me to a higher place where I can see his face to join us for coffee and donuts in the narthex after the service now go in peace share the good news thanks, thanks be, be to god, god.